after the Arsenio Hall show, but before Chappelle's show, there was the Chris Rock show on HBO. The show ran for five seasons between 1997 and 2000. Chris Rock had just solidified himself as a force to be reckoned with in the comedy world. Coming off of his Emmy-winning HBO specials, a critically acclaimed stint as host of the MTV Video Music Awards, and countless magazine covers, Rock was the biggest comedian in the world and was next in line to receive his own show. The show was known for its biting racial commentary and energetic live studio audience, only rivaled by Def Comedy Jam. One of the most notable characters to come from the Chris Rock show was Pootie Tang, who eventually went on to receive his own movie. Pootie Tang was a parody of the black exploitation character from the 1970s who had his own language. Phrases like, Wild I Tay, Capitown, and Tippy Tie were in his regular vocabulary and nobody seemed to have a problem following with what he was saying. Those phrases became part of pop culture. The idea for Pootie Tang came from one of Chris Rock's writers, fellow comedian Louis C.K. Here's how Pootie Tang was created. Chris Rock's relationship with HBO would lead to his weekly talk show. After being fired from Saturday Night Live and the cancellation of In Living Color, Rock decided to focus on the craft of stand-up comedy. That focus led to a half-hour comedy special, Big Ass Jokes, in 1994. The reviews for the special were so great, HBO gave Rock his own hour-long special. At the same time, Louis C.K. was gaining a reputation as a promising comedy TV writer in Hollywood. He had written for late-night hosts like Conan O'Brien and David Letterman. The two had known each other after being in the New York Comedy Club circuit for some time. Chris asked Louis to write for his new HBO show, and Louis said no. At the time, Louis was offered the chance to become head writer and a producer on Dana Carvey's upcoming sketch show. Carvey had just come from Saturday Night Live and was one of the most popular cast members during the early 90s. The show would also have future stars like Steve Carell and Stephen Colbert in the cast and was expected to be a big hit. The show, however, did not resonate with audiences and was canceled after eight episodes were produced, leaving one unaired. Two months after the Dana Carvey show was canceled in 1996, HBO aired Chris Rock Bring the Pain, which brought Chris to new heights in comedy. The success of the HBO special led to a weekly HBO series, The Chris Rock Show. According to Up Rocks, since Louis was out of a job, he gave his friend Chris a call and soon became writer-producer on the show. The Chris Rock Show was a success for HBO and even won an Emmy for Outstanding Writing for a Variety Show in 1999. The show was where Arsenio passed the torch to Rock as the hottest host in late night. Black figures like Spike Lee, Bernie Mac, Magic Johnson, and Al Sharpton would stop by to be interviewed by Rock. And the show would also feature a topical monologue supported by satirical racial and political sketches with a supporting cast that also included Wanda Sykes. The show's most popular moments featured a sketch called How Not to Get Your Ass Kicked by Police, Chris trying to get a petition signed to get a street named after Tupac, and of course, Pootie Tang. Pootie Tang is a stereotype character that comes from old black exploitation films from the 70s. Pootie Tang is an international superstar, famous for a little bit of everything. He's a recording artist. We have got a hit, baby. Actor, vigilante, ladies man, and a hero to all. He was too cool for school. In a 2004 interview with the AV Club, CK revealed that Pootie Tang came from his childhood, where he used to enjoy talking nonsense, believably. I started trying to think of a sketch for Chris Rock, and I came up with the notion of a guy who's so cool, he doesn't even speak English. But he exudes this coolness and this ease. And Chris buys into it and doesn't question it, and just chats with him. CK brought the idea to another writer on the Chris Rock show, Lance Grouther, who would eventually play Pootie Tang. The two then gave the idea to Chris, who wasn't sure if the joke was going to land. The three of them sat on the sketch for weeks until they needed a replacement sketch and they decided to go with Pootie Tang. Much to the surprise of the crew, the sketch was a hit. Two minutes into the sketch, people are chanting the guy's name. The crowd just fucking brought right into it. They loved it. Chris' crowd was great because they were kind of an amped up high energy black crowd, but they were up for anything and they loved silly humor. CK said that when he first started working there. Chris made it clear to all the other writers to not think of this as a black show and to just be funny. Yeah, Pootie Tang just exploded. I mean, we did it on Chris' show, and people were on the radio the next day talking to Hits 107, making shout outs to Pootie Tang on the radio. It was just infectious. After the success of the first Pootie Tang sketch, they didn't try it again for another year to avoid becoming like SNL, where they dragged their characters out. 
On one episode, they showcase an e-true Hollywood story on Pootie Tang's life. And again, the audience loved it. Chris had asked Louie if this could be a possible movie because Pootie was promoting a fictional movie called Sign Your Pity on the Run of Kind. Louie quietly wrote a draft of the movie as an experiment. It was a very difficult movie when I wrote it. Pootie had guns and he was violent. Everyone was fighting all the time. It was more raw and nasty. I wrote it and gave it to Chris and he said, that's crazy. And we forgot about it. Then a couple years later, I was writing a movie with Chris at Paramount and the producers asked me if I had anything kicking around because they liked the work I was doing. So I gave them Pootie Tang along with some tapes. Then they said, let's make this movie. Originally, the film would be directed by Louie and going to be made for $2 million. The studio thought the film would bring in a lot of money, so they doubled the budget to $4 million to move from Paramount subsidiary to the main studio. This meant that the movie had to be rewritten so that it could be PG-13. As Louie began rewriting, he realized that he and Paramount wanted to make two different movies. In a Sirius XM appearance, CK said, I can't say they took my movie away. They hired me to work on a movie that I happen to have written and that I care a lot about, but I got thrown off because I wasn't doing what they wanted. That's the way it works. I had made something that was pretty unique and nobody knew how to handle it. Louis claims that the studio wanted Austin Powers for black people. When the film was completed, the studio had no idea what to do with the movie and even considered shelving it. Rock stepped in and got a couple people involved and found a way to make the studio happy with the final cut of the movie. In June 2001, Pootie Tang was released to minimum advertisement. The studio had also distanced Louis C.K. from the movie while still giving him sole writing and directing credit. To finish the editing of the movie, Chris brought in Ali Leroy, another writer from The Chris Rock Show, and he would go on to co-create Everyone Hates Chris some years later. Critics bashed Pootie Tang when it hit theaters, with some calling it the worst movie of the year. Notable critic Roger Ebert called it incomplete, and Louis thinks it's the worst review he's ever given to a movie. By the time it was finished, I was disgusted with the whole thing and I was also a pariah. I was not hireable as a director. It ruined my filmmaking career. A good example of that is I haven't been hired as a director since then. When I put it together and looked at it, I hadn't made the movie properly. I think I made a lot of mistakes as a director. Given my druthers, I like to have reshot a lot of shit and made major changes. The movie was in trouble when they took it from me. I wasn't proven. I didn't have their confidence to fix it. It was a new experience for me. Pootie Tang's final budget added up to $7 million and the film only took in $3.3 million at the box office, making Pootie Tang a financial loss, losing $3.7 million. But despite the negative reviews of Pootie Tang, it remains a cult classic and widely mentioned in pop culture and rap songs. Pootie Tang now has its own marijuana strand. The Pootie Tang brand extends far beyond movies and sketches. Pootie Tang wouldn't be the only collaboration between Chris Rock and Louis C.K. as the two remain good friends to this day. C.K. helped Rock write the 2001 comedy Down to Earth and the two wrote 2007's I Think I Love My Wife together too. The actor behind Pootie Tang, Lance Grouther, would go on to co-create the short-lived sitcom Wanda at Large with Wanda Sykes and will also co-write Chris Rock's Good Hair documentary in 2009. He was also the head writer for Lopez Tonight. Grouther's most recent gig was as a writer on Lights Out with Dave Spade from 2019 to 2020. Chris Rock realizes that some people really love Pootie Tang and some people really hate Pootie Tang. He's even teased a sequel, but due to the box office, that seems unlikely. There are quite a few films out there that didn't make an impact when it was released, but took on a second life of its own once it's found its rightful audience. Pootie Tang remains a cult classic and one of the most quoted movies ever. Most have connected the character to Chris Rock, but very few knew that Pootie Tang originated from one of the most controversial comedians working today. Stay up to date with the latest news in comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel and follow Comedy Hype across all social media.